The Challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on your husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. For several moments after opening his eyes, Sergeant Preston lay quietly and tried to remember where he was. Judging from the crude, unfinished walls and the bare surroundings, he was in some miner's or trapper's cabin. Turning his head slightly, he saw a man seated at a table, evidently dealing himself a game of solitaire. The man's back was toward him. A sudden impulse made the sergeant raise one hand and feel his jaw. To his surprise, it was covered with a stiff growth of beard. And then the sergeant heard a familiar whine. Hmm, oh, king, old fellow. At the sound of Sergeant Preston's voice, the man at the table turned around and glanced at the bunk. So you finally got your eyes open. You mind telling me where I am? Well, if you go south for a couple of days, you'll hit the Peel River. Aside from that, you ain't much of any place. Peel River, eh? I have a vague recollection of making a patrol up on the porcupine. Seems to me I was on my way back to Dawson. That's about all I remember. You've been sort of under the weather. So I gathered. What was the matter with me? Pneumonia, I reckon. Anyway, you were out of your head and burning up with fever. Thought you were a goner there for a while. Where'd you find me? About 20 miles from here. You were flopped down in the snow beside your team. That big husky there was crouched down next to you, trying to keep you warm with his body. Good old king. <laughs> and you brought me here to this cabin and nursed me. Yeah, I get fed up playing solitaire all the time. I figured you had the makings of a good poker player. How long have I been here? Oh, around nine days, I reckon. Can't say for sure. Every so often I forget to mark the calendar. I owe my life to you. That'll be a hard debt to pay. <laughs> Shucks, in a country like this, you never can tell. Maybe you'll get a chance to return the compliment one of these days. I don't even know your name. Well, call me Smith. Bill Smith. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Glad to know you, Sarge. Not half as glad as I am to know you. Sergeant Preston stayed on at the cabin for several days while he regained his strength. Then, with King breaking trail for the team, he headed back for Dawson City. Two weeks from the day he first opened his eyes in Bill Smith's cabin, the sergeant stood in Inspector Maynard's office at Mounted Police Headquarters. At his side was the great dog, King. Sergeant, I'd like to give you a little rest after the experience you've just been through, but I'm afraid you're out of luck. For the present, at least. Well, it's all right, sir. I had plenty of rest at Bill Smith's cabin. A little too much, in fact. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Because I have another job for you. Oh? What sort of a job, sir? A little over a month ago, a gold convoy was held up by four gunmen. It happened just north of Selkirk. They killed the officer who was guarding the shipment and got away with $100,000 in gold bullion. Who was the man who was killed? Corporal Douglas. Too bad. Douglas was a good man. One of the best. Which is one reason, incidentally, why I'm assigning you to the case. If it's humanly possible, sir, I'll bring in the killers... Any line on who they were? Yes, we have descriptions on all four of them. And I think we've identified the leader. Who is he? His name is Buck Crowley. He's got a record as long as your arm. And he's wanted by the American authorities for a shooting up in Nome, Alaska. Oh. Luckily, they had a circular out on him. That's how we were able to spot him. Uh, just a minute, I've got it right here in my desk. It shows a picture of him. Here it is, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Inspector... What is it, Sergeant? I I request very earnestly, sir, that you relieve me of this particular assignment. What's that? I can't go after this man. Sergeant, there's no such word as can't in the vocabulary of the Northwest Mounted Police. Now, what makes you think that you can't go after him? Because Buck Crowley saved my life, sir. He did what? Buck Crowley is the man who told me his name was Bill Smith. He's the man who picked me out of the snow when I was half dead with pneumonia and nursed me back to health. Are you sure of that, Sergeant? No doubt of it, sir. This is Bill Smith's face in the picture. The description tallies exactly. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Sergeant, but I'm not going to relieve you of this assignment. 
Your orders still stand. If I bring in Buck Crowley, I'll be bringing him into the hangman. In all probability, you will. It was Crowley who shot Corporal Douglas. He killed another human being in cold blood. And the legal penalty for murder is death. But I owe my life to Crowley, sir. How can you expect me to take his away from him? I expect it because you wear the uniform of the Northwest Mounted Police. When you enlisted in the force, you swore to uphold the Queen's laws. That oath takes precedence over all personal ties and obligations. Frankly, Sergeant, I'm surprised that you even raised the question. Very well, sir. I'll bring Buck Crowley in. But when this case is closed, Inspector, I intend to submit my resignation from the force. Well, suit yourself about that, Sergeant. I hope you'll reconsider when the time comes. In the meantime, your duty is clear. Inspector Maynard assigned Constable Tom Blake to assist the sergeant in the capture of Buck Crowley and his gang. A short time after Sergeant Preston's conversation with the inspector, Constable Brake reported to the sergeant for orders. How much has the inspector told you about this case, Tom? Not much, Sergeant. I heard about the holdup, of course, and the killing of Corporal Douglas. Mm -hmm. But I still don't know any of the details. Who was it the gold belonged to that was stolen? Yukon Express Company. You probably know how they operate, Tom. They cash in gold dust for the miners, melt it down into bullion... Then ship it to Saltwater by dog sled. Uh, any idea which way the holdup men went after the robbery? Yes. A constable from Selkirk got on their trail as soon as the case was reported. Their tracks led to a small cabin about five miles from the scene of the robbery. Apparently, when they got to the cabin, they split up the gold, and each one headed in a different direction. Pretty smart. What did the constable do? Well, not knowing which crook to follow, he went back to town for help. By the time the chase was resumed, the tracks were snowed over, and the hold-up men had made a clean getaway. And we haven't a blessed thing to go on. On the contrary, we know exactly where to lay our hands on the leader. How so, Sergeant? As it happens, Tom, I stayed at his cabin for several days on the way back from my last patrol. At the time, of course, I didn't know who he was. He called himself Bill Smith. But his real name is Buck Crowley. Here's a circular on him. Ah. Ah. So the American authorities want him, too. Where is this cabin of his located, Sergeant? About 50 miles north of the Peel River. Oh, that's away in the middle of nowhere. What do you suppose he's doing up there? Hard to say. Maybe that Crowley's pals plan to meet him there later on. Or it may be that each of them's holed up in his own hideout, waiting for the hue and cry to die down. What's your plan, Sergeant? First thing we're going to do is arrest Buck Crowley and bring him back to Dawson. Get your gear together and be ready to hit the trail within an hour. Right, Sergeant. The same day that Sergeant Preston set out from Dawson with Constable Blake, Buck Crowley received a visitor at his cabin. The visitor was one of the three gunmen who had helped him hold up the Yukon Express Company's gold shipment. His name was Mike Jerome. Jerome! What in blazes are you doing here? Hello, Crowley. Hitchcock was getting worried. He's wondering why you haven't shown up at Grand Forks with the gold. Why, that... I never promised him I'd be there by any particular time. I know you didn't, Buck. But me and Quentler and Whitey have all cashed in our share of the bullion. You're the only one who hasn't shown up. Hitchcock thought maybe something had happened to you. Well, he was wrong. I'm just taking it easy, that's all. Besides, I was taking care of a sick Mountie for down there two weeks. You were doing what? You heard me. I said I was taking care of a sick Mountie. I found him passed out in the snow... Just about dead with pneumonia. And you brought him here to the cabin? Certainly I brought him here. What else did you expect me to do? I couldn't let him die out there in the snow, could I? Buck, sometimes I think you're plenty smart, and sometimes I think you're just plain crazy. You think nothing of drilling a Mountie during a holdup, and then you turn right around and play nursemaid to another one. Oh, forget it. I just did it for a laugh. For a laugh? Sure. It was really funny. <laughs> Imagine a Mountie living under the same roof with a guy that's wanted for murder. Not only that, he thinks I'm a wonderful guy. Says he hopes he can pay me back someday. Boy, you sure have got a queer sense of humor. What do you think that Monty's going to do when he finds out who you are? Oh, stop worrying. I told him my name was Bill Smith. How will he ever find out who I really am? I'll tell you how. By looking at your picture in the post office at Dawson. What, what are you talking about? In case you don't know it, the Yanks are after you for that shooting up at Nome. What? They've issued a circular with your picture on it. I saw it myself just before I came up here. It says wanted. Buck Crowley, $500 reward. Oh, holy smoke. I better start drawing myself some whiskers right now. What if that Monty comes back here looking for you? I've got a hunch he won't do that. Why not? Because I saved his life, that's why. 
But just in case he does, we'd better make tracks out of here. Mike Jerome stayed at Buck Crowley's cabin overnight. The following morning, the two crooks prepared to head south. Jerome helped Crowley load the latter's share of the stolen gold bullion on Buck's dog sled. Uh, is, is this all the gold? It's enough, ain't it? Here, put it right down on top of that last load. I'll cover it all over with a tarp. All right. And uh, lucky that Monty didn't run across this stuff when he was staying here. If he had, he'd never have gotten over that attack of pneumonia. Why not? Oh, sudden complications would have set in. <laughs> Such as lead poisoning? <laughs> What do you think? Well, joking aside, Buck, how long ago was it that that Monty left here? Well, let's see, it's been over a week. About nine or ten days ago, I guess. Well, that means he must have just got back to Dawson by now. Yeah, I suppose so. Why? I was just wondering how soon he might come back here. If he does come back, that is. Even if he spots that picture right away, it'll still take him another nine or ten days to make the trip back here. I guess our trail ought to be pretty cold by then. Sure it will, so stop your worrying. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay, Buck. I'm ready whenever you are. All right, Don Jake. Line them up, boys. That's it. Now then, mush, you huskies. Mush! Mush, 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 boys. Mush. Eight days later, Sergeant Preston and Constable Blake arrived at the abandoned cabin. They halted their teams a short distance away and looked around for signs of life. Okay. 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 Hold on. He's home, Sergeant. I'm wondering the same thing. I don't see any sign of his dog team. Maybe he's gone hunting. Well, we'll soon find out. Come on, King. <laughs> King ran forward and nosed suspiciously around the door of the cabin. He sensed that the cabin was empty, but he also discovered that the owner of the cabin had another visitor since his master had left. Too bad there are no windows in the place. You could see whether anyone's inside. From the way King's acting, I think the cabin's empty. Just the same. We better not take any chances. I have my gun here. Stand back, sir. He'll be out of his line of fire if he is inside. I'll knock on the door. Apparently he is gone. Well, let's take a look inside. As Sergeant Preston opened the door, King rushed forward into the cabin, ready to shield his master from any unexpected dangers. One, Tom. It's all right. If there were anyone inside, King would have smelled him out. Still plenty of food on the shelf. And look, he left this pack of cards lying there on the table. Yes, but there are no blankets on the bunk. Maybe he went out hunting for a few days and he's planning to come back here. It's possible. Tom, I'm wondering if Buck Crowley had his share of the gold hidden somewhere around the cabin while I was staying here. Say, that's an idea. If he did, maybe it's still here. Let's take a look around. A thorough search soon proved that the gold was nowhere in or around the cabin. Well, if he had the gold here, he's evidently taken it with him. In that case, he must have cleared out for good. He probably headed north for the border. We won't have to guess about that. That's one thing King can tell us. Bill Smith, boy. Bill Smith, the man who lived here. Which way to go? Come on, let's go outside and see where he points. He must have gone south. Well, don't forget, Tom. The American authorities are looking for him, too. They may think it's too risky to cross the border into Alaska. Oh, that's right. I'd forgotten about that. But if he's not going out that way, what the dickens does he intend to do? He'll never get by the inspection post at Chilkoot Pass or White Pass with that load of bullion. And he certainly can't carry enough supplies on his sled to try beating his way out through the wilderness. The answer would seem to be that he intends staying in the territory. Come on, Tom. There's no use wasting time trying to guess what he's up to. The only way we'll ever find out is go after him. I guess you're right, Sergeant. King! Line up the team, fella. We're going to hit the trail. Line, tall guy! Line the team! All right! From King! One! Crash! Crash! Buck Crowley's trail was eight days old, and the tracks of his sled had long since been snowed over. But King's sensitive nostrils enabled him to follow the outlaw without difficulty. The trail led south across the frozen surface of the Peel River and then veered southwest toward Dawson City and the Gold Creeks. Eventually, it ended at Grand Forks, a mining community which had grown up at the junction of El Dorado and Bonanza Creeks, not far from Dawson. Hold on, hold on. What's the matter with King, Sergeant? Is he found something? I'm afraid he's lost the trail. Once a dog gets to a busy place like the Forks, it's pretty hard to untangle all the different scents. Well, at least we followed him this far. 
I wonder why in thunder Crowley should come here. He may have just stopped off for supplies, but somehow I don't think so. I don't think so either. Looks to me like this is the place he was heading for. Tom, has it occurred to you that gold bullion is a very unnegotiable form of wealth? What do you mean, Sergeant? No miner ever melts down his gold into bullion. He either uses his gold directly as money or else he cashes it in for paper currency. Imagine what would happen if Crowley or his pals tried to cash in a bar of solid gold, especially a bar stamped with the mark of the Yukon Express Company. Uh, they could always file off the stamp mark. Even so, they'd have some tall explaining to do. Uh, I guess you're right at that. But they must have some way of getting rid of the stuff. Unless they leave the territory, the only outfits that will take that bullion off their hands are banks or shipping companies. There are no banks in Grand Forks. But there is a shipping company. The Yukon Express has a branch officer. Oh, my golly, that's right, Sergeant. Do you suppose Crowley and his pals are in cahoots with some employee of the express company? I don't know, Tom, but the idea is worth looking into. Let's stop in and have a talk with the manager of the express office. A short time later, the sergeant and the constable halted their teams outside the express office in Grand Port. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Let me do the talking, constable. All right, sir. Ezra Hitchcock, the manager of the express office, was fat and elderly. His face was framed between carefully tended gray side whiskers, while a series of chins bulged down over his collar. He stared at the two Mounties suspiciously as they approached the counter. Are you the manager of this office? That's right. Ezra Hitchcock is my name. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police, and this is Constable Blake. Yeah, what do do? can I do for you gentlemen? We're trying to put a stop to some of these petty gold robberies that have been taking place on the creeks. We thought maybe you could help us. Why, certainly. I'll be glad to do what I can. So far, we haven't been able to get the goods on any of the suspects we've arrested. Trouble is, they apparently cash in the gold dust as soon as they steal it. I see. In all probability, a good many of the thieves have cashed in their loot right here in this office. I wouldn't doubt it, Sergeant. We do a tremendous business with the miners around these parts. And, of course, we have no way of checking up on their credentials. Do you keep a record of every transaction? I mean by that, uh, do you record the name of every person who cashes in gold? Uh, we do if they ask for a bank draft. Otherwise, if they just want to exchange their gold for cash... We write down the amount of the transaction and let it go at that. Oh, that's too bad. I was hoping we could use your records as evidence. Who is it that actually hands out the money on these transactions? Why, I do, Sergeant. In other words, no one can cash in gold in this office without your knowledge and consent. Well, that's right. Why do you ask me that? Oh, I was just wondering if you might be able to identify any suspects we bring in. Hmm. Well, I have a fair memory for faces... I dare say I could tell you whether or not they had been in here. If you can do that, it'll be just as good as finding the gold in their possession. Thanks very much, Mr. Hitchcock. We won't bother you any farther. Uh, no bother, gentlemen. No bother at all. Good day. Bye. Bye, sir. I'll drive down to the end of the street, Tom, around the corner, and we'll start. All right, sir. On King! On Flash! Kogak! Flash! You husky! Jinking! Jinking! Okay, hold on, hold on. Well, Sergeant, what do you think? I have a hunch that Ezra Hitchcock's our man. You don't suppose Hitchcock got suspicious when we were there? I don't know. He's certainly no fool. Wouldn't surprise me a bit if he saw through that story I told him. That's why we're stopping here. What do you mean? If Hitchcock really does have the wind up, there's a chance that he'll try to communicate with Crowley. If that happens, he may lead us to Crowley's hideout. That's a smart idea, sir. Well, let's hope it works. I suppose he can spot us here if he comes out of his office? No, not necessarily. If we keep back behind the corner of this building. Sergeant, he's coming out now. Yes, I see him. And he's calling that boy. Looks like he's handing him a message or something. Stand back, Tom, so he won't see us. Uh, we'll stop the boy as he comes by. Ah, uh, we're safe. He's gone back in his office. Well, hello there, son. Oh, hello. Who are you? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. And this is Constable Blake. What's your name? Joey. Well, Joey, we're working on a case. I wonder if you'd help us. Gee, yes, sir, I'd like that. Fine. What was it that Mr. Hitchcock gave you just now? It's a note. He told me to take it to a man named Buck. He did, eh? Did he tell you where to find this man? He told me I'd find him in a shack at the end of Stony Canyon. That's about three miles out of town. Yes, I know the place. Let me see the note, Joey. Yes, sir. What does it say, Sergeant? 
two Mounties just came to the office and asked me a lot of questions. I think they're wise. You and the others had better clear out of the neighborhood immediately, signed Hitchcock. Gee, does that mean Mr. Hitchcock is working with a, a gang of crooks? Looks that way, Joey. The man you were supposed to deliver this note to is wanted for murder. Golly, what should I do now, Sergeant? Just lie low and keep out of Hitchcock's way. I want him to think you went ahead and delivered the note, just as he told you to. What about you two? Are you going to capture the crooks? We're going to try. Gee, can I come with you? I'm afraid not, Joey. We'll tell you all about it when we get back. All right, Tom, let's go. Sergeant Preston and Constable Blake headed out of town in the direction of Stony Canyon. A few minutes later, Ezra Hitchcock emerged from the express office and went to a room located on the second floor of a nearby building. He knocked on the door. Hitchcock, what are you doing here? I'll tell you in a minute, Crowley. Are the other three here? Yeah, they're all here. Good. Let me come inside. What's up, Hitchcock? Yeah, something wrong? Uh, plenty's wrong. A Mountie named Sergeant Preston is in town. Oh, Sergeant Preston? Yes, he's got another Mountie with him. They came to the office a little while ago and asked me a lot of questions about cashing in gold. They're wise to the whole game. Holy Mac, what's that? What are we going to do? Uh, just a minute, I'm not through. I've laid a trap for them. What, what kind of a trap? I figured Preston would be watching to see if I got in touch with him. So I wrote a note addressed to you. You... I gave it to a kid and told him to take it to you in that shack at the end of Stony Canyon. What happened? I went back in the office and watched out the window. Sure enough, Preston intercepted the note. He and the other Monty are on their way out to Stony Canyon right this minute. What's the idea? Now Preston knows for sure you're in on the deal. When he comes back from the canyon, the first thing he'll do is arrest you and try to make you talk. Of course you you a Preston uh, isn't coming back from that canyon. Not if you four do your parts. What do you mean? There's only one entrance to Stony Canyon. It's strewn with big boulders. The shack is at the other end. When the Mounties come back from looking at that shack, I want you four to be hiding behind those boulders with guns. Do I make myself clear? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plenty clear, Hitchcock. Plenty clear. Half an hour later, Sergeant Preston and Constable Blake arrived at the shack and found that it was deserted. The sergeant realized at once that he had been tricked. No one's lived here for months. I'm afraid Ezra Hitchcock is smarter than we thought. What do you mean? That note was a trick. Just wanted to get us out here of the canyon. But why? You mean to gain time? If that's all we had in mind, we'll be getting off lucky. How so? We may have walked right into a death trap, Tom. Death trap? There's only one way out of this canyon. That's the way we came in. The entrance is narrow, and it's strewn with boulders. You're right, Sergeant. It's a perfect setup for an ambush. Do you think we can fight our way out? We may have to, Tom. In any case, I'm glad we have King along to help us. The two Mounties left the shack and headed their teams back toward the canyon entrance. About halfway along the canyon, Sergeant Preston called a halt. Okay. 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 What's up, Sergeant? Loosen your carbine in his boot and be ready to try not to give the impression that we're on guard. Right, Sergeant. King! Listen, fella. I want you to run ahead of the team. Up there, fella. Way ahead. Understand? <laughs> That's it, boy. That's the idea. What's your plan, Sergeant? If they're trying to take us by surprise, they won't shoot at King. I'll try to hold their fire until we come within range. The King will smell them out and go for them, even though they're hidden. That'll give us a chance to get a bead on them and take cover before they start firing. Sounds good to me. All right, let's mush. Hun King! Hun, you husky! Mush! Mush! King was running a good 50 yards ahead of the two teams. Suddenly, as he entered the narrow defile that led out of the canyon, he veered right and charged toward a clump of boulders. Hey, the dog! He's coming right at us! Two of the crooks were hidden behind the boulders. King leapt at them, snarling and slashing viciously with his fangs. The sergeant saw what had happened. Oh, you huskies! Come on, Tom! Grab your carbine and follow me! Right, sergeant! The two Mounties made a rush toward the scene of the struggle, dropping behind boulders every few seconds as they ran. Shots rang out from the other side of the canyon. Hey! There's two more on the other side of the canyon. We'll take care of them later. Get them away from me. I give up. Just lie still and he won't hurt you. Come on, Tom. Nice. The other crook was sprawled on the ground, clutching his shoulder in pain. Your shot busted my shoulder. You're lucky I didn't aim between oh. your eyes. Tom, Yes. help me get handcuffs on these two, All but right. keep down while you're doing it. All right. The shots from the other side of the canyon entrance had ceased momentarily. 
The sergeant questioned his two prisoners. Who's over there on the other side of the canyon? One's Mike Jerome. The other's Buck Crowley. What about Hitchcock? Hitchcock? You wouldn't catch that fat toad around oh. here when there's any shooting going on. He stayed back in town. What's our next move, sergeant? I don't know, Tom. Looks like they've got us pinned down. Isn't there any way out of the canyon except through that cut? Take a look at those cliff walls. They're almost straight up and down. It's the same way all around the canyon. What about going farther down the canyon? Maybe we could cross over to the other side and circle around behind them. I'm afraid there's only a hundred to one chance we could make it. We may have to take that chance. King had been watching intently as the two Mounties discussed the situation. He sensed that his master was trapped, unless the two men on the other side of the canyon could be driven out of their hiding places. The great dog acted almost automatically. King! He's charging straight across the canyon. He'll never make it. As the great dog sprinted forward, a rifle glinted on the other side of the canyon. Long King! Both the sergeant and the constable saw the movement and fired at the same time. No. We got one of them. The Mounties expected the other gunmen to continue the fight. Instead, they saw Buck Crowley stand up suddenly from behind cover with his hands in the air. Don't shoot, Preston. I surrender. King had already reached the rocks where Crowley and his companion had been hiding. The sergeant shouted to the husky. On guard, King. Watch him, boy. All right, Crowley. Walk forward slowly and keep your hands in the air. Tell your pal to do the same. Then tell him to lie still unless he wants trouble with King. You, Crowley, start marching. Buck Crowley advanced slowly across the canyon to the spot where the two Mounties were waiting for him with leveled carbines. Well, sir, I didn't think we'd be meeting again quite so soon. Sorry it had to turn out like this, Buck. That's the way it goes. Sure, sure, I understand. You're just doing your duty. When you go up for trial, I'll do my best for you. The judge may be lenient when I tell him how you saved my life. Thanks. What about the other man, Sergeant? The one King's got him. Oh, uh, go over and take charge of him, will you, Tom? Bring him back here. Right. The two men watched silently as Constable Blake crossed to the other side of the canyon. Finally, Buck Crowley said, Can I lower my hands now, Sergeant? Can I trust you? Why not? All right. I guess you can lower them. As Crowley lowered his hands, a gun slid from the sleeve of his pocket. But he had failed to see King's approach. The great dog leaped forward, knocking his gun out of his side. Good work, boy. I've got his gun. Sergeant, you all right? Yes, I'm all right, thanks to King. On guard, boy. Pete, sink. Preston, get him off me. I won't try any more oh. tricks. Sorry, Buck, but I don't think I'd better You're trust right. you anymore. What in the world happened, Sergeant? He had a gun hidden up his sleeve, and very foolishly, I let him lower his arms. The gun dropped into his hand, and he fired at me. Yes, and I'd have killed you, too, if it hadn't been for that dog. Yes, I imagine you would, Buck. You know, uh, I didn't like this assignment. Went against the grain to have to arrest a man for murder who had just saved my life. In fact, I told the inspector I was going to resign from the force after I brought you in. What? Yes, Tom. I told him I was going to resign from the force. But Buck's actions have changed my mind. Just between the two of us, Tom, I'm mighty glad this case is closed. Now, here's Sergeant Preston with a preview of our next adventure, the case of The Unwilling Guardian. When King and I started up the White River, we knew the three crooks were planning to steal Bill Cameron's gold. We didn't know their plans included murder until we saw Bill in the middle of the stream, in danger of being swept into the rapids and over the falls. The Devil's Cauldron, the great whirlpool, was waiting at the foot of those falls. It was a situation that called for fast thinking and fast action. Be sure to listen to this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Wednesday until September, when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcasts. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck.